In video 29, we're going to be estimating square roots. So go ahead and take out your homework sheet, which looks like this. We're going to do four practice problems together, and then you have six practice problems at the bottom. We're first going to talk about what perfect squares are. Um, perfect squares, we're going to talk about the first 15. You need to memorize the first 15 for class. What a perfect square is, is if you have a square, Okay, all sides are um, equal in a square. So if the square sides were 2 and 2, we could say it's this 2 squared, which is equal to 4. So 4 is a perfect square. Okay? We're just talking about whole number squares, because you can have perfect squares with fractions and decimals. Okay? So here is the list of the first 15 that you need to memorize. Okay? One squared is one, and then we just talked about four. Three squared is nine. Four squared is sixteen. Okay, and you go down the list. Make sure you write these down there on your notes for today. Okay, because we're going to be using these numbers when we estimate. Okay, we're going to be using perfect squares to do our estimation. So take a minute, pause the video, and write those numbers down. Okay, and memorize them. Okay, a square root of a number. Okay, is when we um, undo a square. It's kind of like um, to undo the multiplication we use division. Well, it's the inverse operation. Okay, so um, the inverse operation of a square is a square root. Now, there are two numbers that all, um, we took the square root of 25. Okay, we could get two numbers for that. We could get 5, and then we could get negative 5. Okay, because if we square both of them, okay, we're going to get 25. So what we want to talk about is what's called the principal square root. The principal square root is the positive root of a number. So the principal square root or the positive square root of 25 is equal to 5. Sometimes you'll see it as this, which means the principal square root is that. Okay, if you see it like this, Okay, it's asking for the negative square root. Okay, and if you see both of them, such as this, it's asking for both of its roots, which are 5 and negative 5. Okay, but mainly here, um, we'll be talking about the principle of the positive square roots, which is what we see here. Okay, take a minute to write those definitions down. Okay, and then we're going to get started with problem number 1. In problem number one, we're looking at the square root of 40. Well, we're going to estimate it because 40 is not a perfect square. Okay? It's going to give us what we call an irrational number. It's going to give us a long number, a decimal number, that doesn't repeat, doesn't terminate, and goes on forever, kind of like pi. Okay? So what we're going to do is just estimate it. So we're going to look at 40 and think about two squares that 40 falls between. Well, if we think about it, we, we take 6 squared, which is 36. So we're going to use 36 and then 6. And then we're going to go to 7 squared, which is 49. Okay, so it falls in between 30, the, the perfect squares of 36 and 49. Now we have to see which one is it closer to. Well, it's 4 away from 6 and it's 9 away from 49. So what it's closer to is the square root of 36. So we take the root of 36, which is 6. So our answer is about 6. And the square root of 40, we say, is about 6. It's going to be 6 point something. Okay? But it's, it's, not going to, um, it's not going to be 7 because okay? it's smaller than our 49 here. Let's look at the second one. We're looking at the square root of 150. So we take 150, and we think about which two perfect squares does 150 fall in between. That's why we memorized the list from earlier. The sooner you get that list memorized, the easier these will become. So we have, we think about 12 squared is 144, and 13 squared is 169. Now we look and see which one is it closer to, 144 or 169. Well, it's 6 away from here, and it's 19 away from here. Okay, so 
is closer to the square root of 144. The square root of 144 is about 12. Okay, and we're talking about principal square roots here, the positive square roots. Let's look at number three. We're looking for the square root of 200. Okay, now if we memorize our table, we know that 14 squared is 196. And 15 squared is 225. So that's where 200 falls in between. Now it's 4 away from here, but 25 away from here. So we're going to take the root of 196 as our estimation. So it is about 14. Is our answer. There's not much to it as long as you have memorized those first 15 perfect squares. Okay. Now this is asking us for the negative root of 75. Okay, so we're looking at where does 75 fit between? Well, the root, um, excuse me, 8 squared is 64, and 9 squared is 81. So it fits between these two. Okay, and now let's see how close it is. Well, it's 11 away from 64, and it's 6 away from 81. So we're going to use the square root of 81, okay, which is about, which is, our answer is, is 9, so our answer is about negative 9. It's going to be a little less than negative 9, okay, because we overestimated here. But we'll go with uh, about negative 9 for the answer for this, the, um, the opposite of the square root of 75. Let's continue. Will you please pause the video, do your six practice problems the same way that we did the ones here um, together, and then you can unpause the video and check your work. Now that you're unpausing the video, assume that you've done your work. Here are your answers. Okay. Up here, I circled the, I, I put the both of the perfect squares that the number falls between, and circled the one that we use. Okay. So, Take a little bit of time tonight and reread um, your 15 perfect squares so that you have them memorized for class tomorrow so that we can get started with our lesson. Thank you for taking your time to do your homework tonight. See, if you have any questions, please write them down. I'll see you tomorrow in class.